Good morning, good morning, and happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. How y'all doing? We're going to have a little breakfast and a little chat. I'm going to respond to all the Q&A. But before I do that, let me say my grace. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you today, Lord, just to say thank you, God. Thank you for blessing us to see this day, one that we have never seen before. Lord, we appreciate it and are so grateful for it. Lord, we thank you for the portion of health and strength that we have, for the food that we have, for the shelter we have, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless those that are always affected by the storms, God, um, and the tornadoes. And, Lord, those that are without power, Lord, we ask you just to restore power to them, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, just to touch those right now that are standing in the need of whatever they need might be. Lord, we know that you can meet that need, Lord God. And we ask you to meet them at that need and exceed it far beyond what they ever could think or imagine, Lord. We thank you, God, for our traveling grace to and fro, Lord God. So we know that this journey is not always guaranteed. We thank you right now, Father God. We ask you, Lord God, for mercy and for continued grace over our lives. Lord, we thank you for your love and comfort around us. We ask you forgive us for the sins that we've committed knowingly, Lord God, and unknowingly, God. Let us have a forgiving heart and love towards one another. We thank you, Lord, for the food we are about to receive, for the fellowship here today. In Christ's name, amen, amen. Amen, amen. So today I just got a little breakfast bowl, and it has grits on it, turkey sausage. I cut up a couple of turkey sausage, some uh, scrambled eggs, and a little cheese on top. And y'all know my boy Frank's in the house. Somebody asked me about Frank's. Y'all know I ain't finna quit Frank's. This is my boo. <laughs> Let's put a little cranks on this thingy thing. And I do eat other hot sauces, y'all. But uh, I like Frank's is my boy. I will have Texas Pete from time to time. I will have Crystal from time to time. Louisiana is the last one on the list, but I'll eat it if, I'm, if I must. So let me get, let me take a bite because I'm hungry. I share with y'all. I know y'all say you don't ever share with us. There's a bite of everything. Grits, sausage, eggs, and cheese, and hot sauce. Mm. Did y'all like that? It's pretty darn good. Anyway, Carson Rain asks, Hey, Carson, if money was not a factor and I was financially free, what job would I do or what would I be doing outside of the current occupation now? Or three things I've learned in my years on earth. Young, if money was no object, I wouldn't be going to work every day. And don't get me wrong, I like my job just fine. It's work. I like any job just fine. It's work and it's helping me pro provide for the things I need. I'm thankful for my job. You know, I could be doing something worse, I'm thankful. But I would not, if if money was no object, I'm not one of those to say if I come into a whole lot of money, I'll keep working because I'd be lying. <clears throat> I would volunteer and only probably a couple of days a week, I'd probably go down and serve at the homeless shelter. A couple of days a week or do something else like volunteer for some of the girls, you know, programs or something like that. But other than that, three things that I've learned in life, God is... That's all I can tell you. And he is truly your friend, y'all. It was a time when I was so down and out. And I didn't think I had. All hope was gone. And if God intervened, wouldn't have intervened, I don't know if I would be here. And I made a commitment then that I know God is my friend. And I can lean and depend on him no matter what. He will cover it. When you think sometimes you're all alone. And that's how I felt at that time. God is indeed there. That's the first thing. And I would tell anybody, get you a relationship with the Lord. Because when everybody else is not around, God is going to always be there for you. Everybody that love you, everybody you love, don't necessarily love you. It's just what it is. You can love a person and you can think they love you, but they don't necessarily love you. And you cannot let that determine how you're going to be towards people. You're going to be disappointment. There's going to be some disappointment. Now, I have gotten a thing where I'm just like, I'm giving you all the energy you give me. I'm going to be good and I'm going to be kind. Kind is going a long way. 
And the third thing I love, every day that we are gifted with this life, in this life, is a blessing. Live it. Do I feel good every day? I can tell you I don't. But I am thankful for every day that God blesses me with. And it will be a detriment and a slap in his face if I didn't try to live it out the best I can. Some days I have to lay around, but I'm grateful in that moment. And I'm telling when you start having yourself a pity party, go into a thing. Thank God for the little things. Thank God for everything he does. Thank God for you breathing. When you start thanking God, you don't have room to be down. And I would say those are the three things that will help you live a healthy life, happy life. Um, Melissa Ely asks, hey, Melissa, do I plan to write any more devotionals? She enjoyed them. You're a very encouraging, uplifting person. And even when you're not feeling well, you still have a smile for everyone. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you for that, Melissa. I uh, I am writing on another one. When it's going to be done, I don't know because I stopped. I had some more, but I got like seven done now. I'm hoping by the end of the year I finished it, but who knows. Mm. I started feeling a lot burned out. And I know that sometimes I have to take a step back. I don't know if it's a mental thing, but I always feel like I got to be working on something. Um, my dad used to say the idle mind is the devil's workshop. So I'm always feeling like I got to be doing something. So it's okay to rest. It's okay to take a break. You can overwhelm and you can do too much sometimes. So yeah, there's that on that. Kimberly Scott. Hey, Kimberly. Hello, Donna. You're looking great. My question is, how much weight have you lost since the surgery and how close are you to having a knee replacement? Not close enough. Not close enough. I've lost 80 pounds. <laughs> I'm not close enough. It seemed like a, a, a half a pound here. Y'all lost a, a pound and a half last month. A pound and a half. But I'm still losing, so I cannot. And I know that I, in, in reality... I know I probably could lose weight real fast if I just go on protein shakes and whatever. It's not sustainable. And when I get there, I got to have the, ex the other knee done three months later. I got to maintain that weight. So I'm, if it takes me a longer time to get there, if it takes me another year, it takes me another year. I'm so thankful. You know I don't still don't recommend the surgery, but I'm thankful because I know I probably wouldn't have lost this much weight and kept it off. And it's, it's a struggle. Keeping weight off is a struggle. It was a time when I gained like five pounds and I lose it back. And I'm, you know, and then when it's that time of the month for women, you blow it up. I blow it up all the time, seven pounds. But I know realistically, you ain't gained no seven pounds overnight. But, you know, once I'm off my cycle, it goes away, you know. But that's too much. That's more information you ask, but. But, yeah, so I'm still intending to have a surgery. That's still my goal. And I know when it's time. And I prayed about that. And I said, I know it's time. God is going to get me there. But. As y'all could see, I still try to eat. I still eat some things I want because that's what my life is going to be like. So I know that, you know, that's what that is. Dendermar asks, hey, Donna. Hey, Dender. Hey, Donna, you are so inspiring. I look forward to watching your videos. My question is, do you ever get lonely living by yourself? I don't know if it's necessarily lonely I get. You know, sometimes I'm like, hmm, I need to get out and get around some people. Because y'all... I love being at home. And I like my alone time, but I do like to fellowship with others too. But I notice that sometimes I have a tendency to become hermit-like. And if I didn't go out to work, <laughs> I might not go nowhere. So I have to... But of course I communicate with people <coughs> on the phone and stuff. And, uh, but, yeah, I... You know, every now and then, I said, it would be nice to have somebody here. But other than that, no, I'm okay. You know, I guess I'm so used to it now because Amber went off to college which uh, in Atlanta. She went to college in Atlanta. And I would go visit her and stuff, and she would come home some. But, you know, and then after she graduated from college, she lived with me a year. She started working as an accountant. And she lived with me a year, and she saved up her money. She went to her own place. You know, Amber's, how old was Amber? 29. Amber had really just come back home with me only to prepare to save for her house. She was on her own, in her own place, in her own apartment, you know, doing her thing. So she moved back 
for the sole purpose to save money to move into her, to purchase her home. And I wanted to see her reach that goal way before me. And I'm, I'm thankful to God that she was able to attain that, to reach a level. So I'm happy for her. And I want her to stay there too. Hey, y'all, I apologize. My camera ran out of storage, so I had to get another camera. But like I was saying, I do want Amber to stay there. I want her to be successful in the house. And we went to a prep breakfast yesterday. And it's the one thing that, you know, my uh, friend, good friend, was there with her daughter. Uh, and I'm so proud of her, too. We want to see our children do well. We want to see our children do way better than us. You know, we want to see them prosper and be self-sufficient. And we want them to have their own lives. We had an opportunity to have ours. We want them to do the same. So, yeah, that's that for that. Byron Shaw says, Hi, Donna. I've been wanting to know how you're destined to be in a new house without Amber. Are you enjoying it? Less stress. Also, any updates on weight loss? Well, I kind of answered those two questions. You know, that's where I, you know, on the previous ones, but... Yeah, uh, yes, it's less stress because I don't have to fuss about her because Emma does as less as possible when she lives with me. And her thing is, Mama, that's because you my mama. Uh-uh. She thinks she was first back to childhood, and it's very frustrating when it's an adult that you got to be telling stuff to do, you know. So, of course, I love my daughter. I'm so proud of her. But, and it may come a time when we... We have to live together. You know, she may have to help me out, but I pray. One of my prayers is that God let me live a life where I could be self-sufficient all my life. But if there ever comes a time when we do have to live together, we have to live together. But that time is not now. It's time for her to build her thing and go on and do her thing. So, oh, hey, Byron. Lauren Hartley asks, hey, Lauren. Hey, Miss Donna, been wondering what your future goals are now that you have your house and your devotionals. I'm curious how you continue to be motivated to dream and how God speaks to you about what's up ahead. I have a hard time myself with that, and I'm wondering how you see the future. And she said, this is also might be too personal, but remember a while ago you were talking about having to leave someone in the past and that you have been connected with for a long time. I'm wondering if that got easier over time. Time is a great manager to, to heal all wounds. Yes, it does get easier. Do you have a grieving process for someone you love that's been in your life for a long time? Most definitely. I would be lying if I said not. But sometimes God removes people for a reason. And what you need to realize is those people go on living their life. Honor God by living yours. Being the best person you can be and continue on. When you think about that person, still after all these years, every now and then the person will pop up in my mind. I'll be like, I wonder how they're doing. I hope they're doing well. But it's not long to be with them. <laughs> let me let me just stop you right there. Or nothing like that. It's just like, I hope they're doing well. I hope they're blessed. You know, and things of that nature. You know, because of course, if somebody you care about, you're going to wonder about them from time to time. And that's even family members I cut off. I always wonder. I always pray for them. I hope they're doing well and they're blessed. So... I often say, God does not speak to me in an audible manner that I can recognize, but I think God reveals things to me and things I'll see, it'll come up. It'll be on my mind and sometimes I'll push it away and God will bring that thing right back to me and somebody will say it or somebody, he'll just confirm it, you know, and it'll be like, you're supposed to be doing something else. You're supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to, I done told you once, basically, it's me, like God done, even in a dream or it'll come to my mind or whatever. And I know that's got to be God because then he'll bring it right back to me. And I'm like, I wasn't even thinking about that. Then somebody will come along and be talking about the same thing. I'm like, mm-mm, I ain't doing it. Then you know you try to be disobedient. It'll come right back around. Because then I tell you, every time I go into a pity party, when I do try to feel sorry for myself, God will come back and show me somebody doing way worse and see how joyful they are and how blessed they are and how, you know, it just, that's how I think God he always gives you opportunity. And sometimes we don't move on that opportunity, but then God will bring it back. He loves you that much. He'll bring that opportunity back around to you again in a different manner. He'll give you an opportunity again to be obedient because you know you might miss the chance to bless somebody when you're supposed to bless them, but God will bring somebody else you need to bless too. Okay. He'll bring the person that's for you. You'll be like, mm-mm, they ain't wrapped up like I want to be wrapped up. That person will come around again. Oh, that person will come around again. You be saying, God, I know that's you. I know that's you, Lord. 
you know, and I can't tell you, you know, specifically, but I think that's it. Mm. Now that I have my devotionals done, I, of course, I'm working on another one. Who knows when it's going to get done? But I'm learning to kind of just sit back and kind of not be doing so much all the time. Of course, I told you I want to learn Spanish. I want to learn coding. It's a whole lot of things I want to do. I'm two classes away from another master's, and Lord knows I've been leaning towards going back to school to get them. <laughs> don't ask. Don't ask, y'all. <laughs> but I feel like it's always something to do. It's always something you do something you like. You know, and it don't have to be anything anybody else would want to do. And guess what? It doesn't have to be a goal that somebody else going to see. Well, wow. She working on this and she got that. It could be you over there want to learn how to knit a blanket. That could be a goal for you. Sometimes we have to learn sometimes how to be still. Don't always feel like you have to be going here, there, and everywhere. Because you don't. Just sit in there. Take some time to meditate with God. And God will give you. Take some time to study his word every day. To spend some time talking to him. To spend some time praying to him. Ask God to lead you. To guide you. To give you something. To give, light a fire up under you. You know. Send you in the right direction. And he'll bring something to you that you didn't even think. Oh, I wasn't even interested in that. And you'll be like, well, I want to do that. That's what I'm saying. And don't feel like you got to just have the meet and answer. No. What you... I'm 50-something years old. I'll be 54 this year, and I'll be like, people say, well, I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't, not really, not really. Anyway, so that's enough of that. I don't know if that answered your question or not. Doris McNeely asked, hey, Doris. Hey, Donna, my question is, what keeps your spirits up? You're always so happy and humble. I talked about that a little bit earlier, too. I have down days. I have days I'm in so much pain. I'm in pain today. If y'all can believe it, I'm in pain. I was struggling getting up here walking. I'm trying to wash my, because I never did do it, but machine, machine going down my mattress pad in the machine. But I stripped my bed. It took everything out of me to strip that bed because I have all kind of junk piled up on the other side, like that's they, that's they side of the bed. Whatever side I ain't sleeping on, this other junk, Bible, books, everything on that side of the bed, my journals, but some of my stuff. Just a whole lot of this. But it took everything I do to get that bed stripped, and it's going to take everything. And then I kind of scrub my mattress down on the slide. I be sleeping on, kind of clean it and freshen it up, give it a refresh with some OxyClean and stuff. I always brush it down because, you know, your sweat and stuff, even through the mattress pad, it kind of stains your mattress. So I clean that every time I change my bed. Not every time. Every time I change my mattress pad. Let me, because I don't change my mattress pad. I don't wash my mattress pad all the time. So, um... I just really thank God for my life, you know, and it will be, like I said, this service not to try to live the best life you can. And I often think that if today is my last minute on earth, I have my last minute today, is whatever it is worth it. Being upset about it is being a, worth it, being mad, being unhappy. So I try to retain joy even when I'm not feeling well, even and it's not, it's a difference than having joy and being happy. Because you're happy is fleeting. You know, you can laugh and get crazy. But sometimes even when I'm down, I still have the joy of the Lord in me. Because I know God is so good and I just get full sometimes. Sometimes I went to, was going to work the other day and I just went into a praise. The song came on the radio and I just got so full thinking of how good. Girl, I think how good how God is and how he brought me from so much. And I just got so full and just started crying and praising on the way to work. So, like I said, if you ever, you keep yourself up because you keep the joy of the Lord with you. Then you ain't walking around, keep, keep, keep <laughs> all the time. But because you're so thankful for what God has done already. God don't ever do anything else for me. God is so faithful. He has blessed me so, so. This is going to be a long video, y'all. He has blessed me so much, and I can't do nothing but have joy. And I tell you, once you go into a, yeah, we get down. We get down. That's life. We human. You know, we get mad and get upset, but you start thanking God, and you just thank God. And you try to look at things from other people's perspective sometimes, too. You know, so, yeah, that's that, darling. 
Cooking with Neighbors, Jerry Ellen. I just found that she had a channel. I went over her channel. She's making my favorite, y'all, that pound cake. But y'all go check her out. Cooking with Neighbors, Jerry Ellen. Hey, Jerry Ellen. Hi, Donna. I really enjoy getting to know you. I think you're wonderful. I have no clue what to ask, LL. Maybe what's your favorite movie? Oh, excuse me, y'all. And why? And what are your must-have items in your pantry? <laughs> One of my favorite movies, I have a lot of movies that I really like, but one of my favorite movies, and it was one of my, my dad's favorite movies, and I really liked this movie uh, when he was living. He liked Pretty Woman, and I really liked Pretty Woman as a movie. And of course, I told you, if I have a lot of movies, that's just one of them. You know, I'm a comedy person, romantic type person, life stories, feel good type movies. I ain't in it all that old horror Sometime I watch suspense stuff, all that old comic action figures. Uh, that ain't my thing. I will watch it, but it ain't nothing I got to see, by the way. Uh, yeah. My must have in the pantry. Frank's. <laughs> my boy Frank's. And uh, I'm going to have some type of hot sauce. I'm, I don't eat tomatoes as much because of the arthritis, but I always have canned tomatoes in my pantry. Seasonings. You know, my typical onion powder, garlic powder, season on black pepper. I can figure out, I can, I can make something out of that with everything. But I'm going to always have, I'm always have like, I keep tuna in the pantry. But those are just some things. I always keep soup in the pantry and saltine crackers. Because, you know, I have some stomach issues. Okay. Toy car. How did you get ill? Why do you think I'm ill? Needing to use a cane to walk. Oh, that's what you mean. And all the other elements you have. What other elements? Especially at such a young age of 50s. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny or nothing, but um, I don't claim any of that stuff. You know, I do have some things going on me, but you know what? I'm, I feel I'm blessed. You know, I'm not ill. You know? <laughs> Somebody might say I'm mentally ill, but I'm not mentally ill either. But no, seriously, I was diagnosed with arthritis. 30 or 31. And um, I knew that my doctor told me he was up front with me then that eventually, you know, it would be a situation with my knees. I always say I had 20 something years of being able to go and do for my daughter and do what I needed to do and run and go. And I still get around great as far as I'm concerned. You know, yeah, my knees hurt and I almost fell in Walgreens. I don't, luckily, I don't have a vanity issue, so walking with that cane at 50 don't even bother me, honey. I'm like, damn, I might do get up on the dance floor and do a dance with my cane when I can, when I feel good. And when I don't feel good, some days I don't need the cane. Some days the pain, I have pain, by the way, every day. It's just the level. And when the weather bad, and it seems like when it's that time of the month with my hormones and stuff, it gets out of whack. It's on 15, but I just deal with it because I can't allow that to stop my life. Now, I don't know if diverticulitis is anything to do with age. So that's a lot of things. I'm lactose intolerant. That's a lot of things dealing with my stomach. I have to watch, you know, the things I eat and I can tell when it's going to not too right. So then I kind of take a step back, eat the crackers and do what I need to do. Eat the little soup and do what I need to do as far as that's concerned. You know, I don't, um, you know, that does have, people of all ages have that, you know, and I don't know where it came from. I, the doctor couldn't tell you, but I'm thankful. And y'all, I kid y'all not, go see about yourself. Because when I got real sick, it was the month that Amber graduated from college. And I'm so thankful because God allowed me to go to her graduation, have her dinner, come back here to Memphis. And I kept feeling sick. I couldn't really hold any food down. And I kept, I was hurting. And I kept saying, well, I'm going to go to the doctor. And I told, I was so sick the week before Memorial Day. And so I took, I was on vacation, I think. And I said, well, you know, I got to go back to work Tuesday. And what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to go to the minor med. Y'all was so sick. I could not hold food down. I was in so much pain. And I end up going to the doctor, going to the emergency room. And I was so discombobulated because I drove myself. I ended up somewhere else that wasn't on. I had to call one of my friends, 
somebody at the hospital, they had to actually call somebody to transport me over because I managed to get, I had to stop and sit down to get in the building. I managed to get to the building. They got somebody to transport me to the emergency room. And I called one of my girlfriends. I said, girl, I'm in the hospital somewhere. I don't know where I'm at. I need some help. And so I ended up getting diagnosed. And he told me if I would wait one more day, I was septic. You know, the thing was leaking in my system. Oh, it was just was hotness. And I thank God. I stayed in the hospital nine days. And But I'm very cautious of, you know, how I eat, what I eat. You know, I changed my eating habits way before the weight loss surgery. So as far as that, I have some issues dealing with female issues. But I've had those for a long time. And um, one day, God is going to let me go on through menopause one day. But it's not right now. I thought I was there, y'all. I had, what, three months when I was like, oh, this is TMI. But I thought, they say, oh, no, you have to do a year. No soon she say you have to do a whole year. Here come that baby back in full effect. And it ain't stopped since. <laughs> but I have some dish issues dealing with my cycle I've had for years. And um, I think some of these are predisposed to uh, being an African-American female, some of the things I deal with. But other than that, no, I don't claim anything else, you know, and so I'm fine, you know. But like I said, nothing I'm dealing with is age specific. So I don't know how old you are. You know, you could have some of these same issues. So and people of all ages, I know, get knee replacement. So. I'm thankful, like I said, I still have the mobility that I do have that I can get up, drive for myself, do for myself, walking with a cane ain't no big deal to me. Anyway, Dorothea Murray, Murphy. Hey, Dorothea, Dorothea. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hey, Donna. I've been watching for a long time, but I've been watching a couple of months. My question is, have you ever considered not eating meat for a week to see that the pain in your knees stop? I have those weeks from time to time. I always have a meatless day during the week, but I don't know that what I eat, I don't eat a lot of beef and pork, period, because that was one thing that the doctor told me to eat sparingly. But I've gone without that, and I don't know that it, you know, that where my knees are, my knees are bone on bone. And that's a, and then on top of that, it's arthritis, so... I don't know that, that you know, that it helped me at all. I couldn't really tell the difference, to be honest with you. Because like I said, there's some level of pain there every day. Since I lost the weight, I have a lot more better days because I'm able to stand in the kitchen and stuff a lot longer because I think it's not as much pressure on my knee. And I do think that the weight... Kind of, I may have, I was going to eventually need the knee surgery, but I think the weight, me being such a heavy weight, because my highest was 360 pounds. I do think that speeded up the, the, the degradation of my knees, as well, if, if that helps. Kathy Quick, you look great. Was, was wanting to know if you're still doing knee surgery. Also, your home is lovely. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Um, yeah, I'm still going to do the knee surgery like I talked about that in the previous ones. Whenever God blesses me to get to that point, I'm going to do it. GJ. Hi, GJ. Hi, Donna. Do you have any future dating plans? And if so, what qualities interest you in a potential suitor? <laughs> you know, um, I really don't have a lot of dating plans, to be honest, which I was telling my sister the other day. The places I go are not littered with single men. First of all, most of the time they're going to be with their wife or whatever. So I ain't looking for nobody, basically. If God blesses me with somebody, fine. I told y'all, um, I do believe in marriage. I do believe in marriage is great. With that said, I also believe a single life is great. I've been in both. I've been in a relationship. I love being single. I love doing what I want to do. I love not having to consider anybody else. I have a strong personality. I'm very nice and I'm very sweet, but I have a mind of my own. So it's going to take a strong man that's in his own self, if you understand what I'm saying, who doesn't get offended by me having an opinion because I'm going to have one. Believe you me, I'm going to have one. 
but I also know how to sit back. I'm not trying to be a man. I'm not a man. So if God blesses me with somebody, he blesses me with somebody. I used to say they were going to have to come to my front door because that's really how I met my husband, my last husband. <laughs> but in truth, they really they got to come to my front door because I might not even answer the door. Now I got the ring doorbell. I'm like, oh, they can, they can leave that package out there. <laughs> but one thing that is a must, all else, not, not talking about that, they must have a relationship with God. They must love the Lord. They must honor him. You know, I need them to have their own spiritual relationship with God. Because um, I need somebody who know and can cover me in prayer. Who can go to God for me like I can go to God for them. Who don't have a problem with me if I say I can sit down and talk about the goodness of God with who knows that without God, we wouldn't be here. I need somebody who have that foundation in their life. I need somebody who is self-sufficient. They must work. They must work or be doing some or getting some type of income. Cause, baby, I, I am not a sugar mom. I can't do it. I need somebody to understand that it takes a partnership to make something work. And the outside of your home is not where it's at. And I'm not dating for dating purposes because I'm celibate. So if I do start to dating, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of push back from dating, it's with the intent of marriage. So I need somebody who has that mindset that, hey, I want to settle down. I want to get married. I want to do. And I need somebody who has some commonality with me, who wants to do the things I want to do, who's a decent human being, who doesn't have a problem with me because I'm a giver. Who doesn't have a problem with me giving? Who doesn't have a problem with me being kind? Who doesn't have a problem with me being nice? But who understands that I do have visitors in my home, but I don't let everybody in and out of my house. My home is a sanctuary to me. It's my place of peace. You know, and I come home and I'm it's peace here. I don't want nobody who trying to disrupt my life and disrupt my home. So if they don't have peace over top and they don't have kindness in their heart, and, you know, and love their heart and want to get along, to get along with everybody. You can't say nothing to them. You offend that. That's not the person for me because I'm not, I don't have time for all that offense stuff. You trying to be in an uproar and you keep yourself upset all the time. And that's not for me. But like I say, so I don't, somebody with some calm and doggone sense and a decent human being. I don't, I don't know if that's hard. That, that must be, I don't know if that exists anymore. Oh, and they must be a man. I mean, a natural born man. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all yeah. <laughs> know I'm silly. Marie. Oh. Cold Field Sharon 52. I'm going to say your name is Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Hi, Donna. Are you going to keep your hair cut short? Cut look very nice on you. I can tell you're losing weight. Keep up the good work. Sharon. This is really the fourth time my hair has been cut down. Ironically, I cut it down. My daughter graduated from, from high school. And she didn't really want me to go because my hair had been long. She didn't really want me to go to her graduate. What that was stunning. I said, girl, it's too hot. I'm not putting on no wig. So I think she had just got used to it when she graduated from college. Well, I had to cut it down again after the first time because it was going back funky. So I cut it down again. Apparently close together. Then when she graduated from college, I let it grow back out and it grew out long again. But so I cut it back down when she graduated from college. I was heavy then. I was 359.6, which is 360 for all intents and purposes. I was like, I got this. Whew. I got rid of that hair then. So I was cut short again. Of course, it grew back out long again. When I had the surgery, right before the surgery, my hair was pretty long. But I cut it. I cut it to about right here. And it was pretty healthy. But after I had the surgery, it just got damaged. It was like, it was a hot mess. So I cut it down. Now I'm letting it grow back out. There's still a spot in the back that's not kind of growing a little funky. But I'm letting it grow back out. I'm going to let it grow back out. But who knows when I decide. Y'all, hair is work. <laughs> and I didn't realize because even when I cut it down, it's the lowest I had to cut is probably about 
a little bit shorter than this. This was the first time I went ball. Y'all, ball is freeing. Ball requires zero work. All you do is just get in there and wash your tap. And you can wash your hair every day, let the water run on it, and then just put some little oil on your head. Y'all, that was free. And this hair, this, even this amount, taking work. Oh, Jesus, all these products and, oh, child, don't even get me started. But no, that's to answer your question. I'll let it go out again. But it's a lot more gray, so we'll see how it grows in. Um... I had this question a lot, but Marie P, P was one of the people asked, and I asked answered someone in the comment. But several people asked me, why do I add salt into my boiled eggs? It helps them to peel easy. Most of the time it works, but every now and then it doesn't. Sometimes I use baking soap too. I've had people say put vinegar in, different ways to do it, but the salt does work most of the time, and you can peel the eggs real, really easy. So every now and then it doesn't. You know, it have a few that don't want to act right. Nia Nicole. Hey, Nia. Hey, Ms. Donna. Love the meal prep. I want to ask for the Q&A when you knew it was best to get divorced, and how did you work through letting them go of the man you love? Woo! <laughs> Y'all... First of all, I'm going to give a shout out to my husband, Derek, um, my ex-husband. He's remarried, you know. I'm going to give a shout out to him. Derek was a good person. Came from a good family. I knew on the wedding day. I knew on the wedding day that I probably shouldn't have got married. And I actually told him. I don't think I'm going to do this. And I had been up preparing the food. I was going to work. And I had my daughter. I was so tired. And he said, no, baby, you're just tired. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he right. Maybe I'm tired. You know. So... I will always have love for Derek because I, I, she, he's not my daughter's biological father. He, I met him when Amber was born. She was a brand new baby, an infant. I mean, a few weeks old at my doorstep. He was, somebody, one of my friends brought him over there to teach me how to drive a standard shift car that I had purchased and didn't know how to drive. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Because I didn't get my license to after Amber was born. So, yeah, so that's that. But uh, that's how I met my husband. And he was always there for me. He was always kind. He and I are very different. And I think that different complements each other. But the way he wants to live his life and the way I live is two different things. And I think that you do each, you do your person a disservice when you know you want to live one way and another person wants to live another way. And I don't think it would, I don't think he would have ever been happy with me. And I don't think that it would have ever matched. He stayed in my daughter's life. He was good to my daughter. Now, my daughter knows who her biological father is. And I'm close with their family as well. It's not like she didn't know them, you know. And they were at my wedding. You know, his her, her, her grandmother and um, great aunts and stuff was at our, at our wedding. That's the relationship we had. But... Like I said, he was a good person, and I will always have a love for him, but not like a love to be in a marriage, okay? You know, because like I said, he took my daughter in, he loved her, he treated her like his own, he loved me, but I think he wouldn't have been happy in the long run, because I think he's been able to live the life that he's wanting to live, to do the things that he wants to do, you know, and not have somebody scrutinizing and and saying something and not being happy with the things, you know, the habits he has. And uh, I wasn't perfect either because I can be something else, y'all. <laughs> so don't get me wrong. I think we were just two good people, but we're not, we were not meant to be good together. Is if that makes sense. So when I left 
it was not an issue of leaving because, and I still loved him then and I still had some guilt because I felt like my marriage, when I got married, it was going to be my marriage. It was going to be forever. So I think, and when you, you're saved and you're a Christian, it's very hard to walk away from those vows you made. Whether you made them in the wrong or right, you, it's tough. That's a tough thing to kind of say, uh, yeah, you know, but I knew that I said, I can't, this is not something I can see for my life for the rest of my life. And he's not going to be happy with me for the rest of his life. It's best if we part ways. But like I said, I would always be his friend. I will always care about him. I will have some love for him because of the type of person he was. He's a good person. I gained a great family, extended family from it. My mother-in-law had a heart of gold. She called me when we got divorced and said, you're not going to divorce us too, are you? I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. My daughter, they accepted as her granddaughter, as a grandchild, a cousin. It was never any difference towards her. And I'm so thankful. You know, I was blessed by being married to him. I was blessed by knowing him. And I hope that he feels the same about me. I don't know. He probably don't. I don't know. But like I said, I will always have some care about him. And I think God blessed him with the wife that he was supposed to be with, to be honest with you. So, you know, I don't really go into other people's marriage, you know, because. Um, and I still have some guilt, even after all these years, if I would have put more effort into it. I don't know. I don't know. Because I was. I don't know that I put all the effort that I should have put in it either. So, really, I don't think I did. Because we went to counseling. I was like, you know what? I don't even want to be bothered with this mess. We went to one counseling session. And it was more me wanting to quit than him. So, I don't know. I don't know if I can't even answer that. I hope that helped. And the last question is, Miss Renee. Hey, Miss Renee. Hey, Auntie Dunham. I've been slight, silently watching and supporting for a few months now. I just want to say you are a joy to now have in my life. I truly enjoy you in every video and the great conversations. Love you, Auntie. Also, to what you're saying about next Sunday dinner, I would love to know any old school tips, recipes, and stories. Chum. I don't really have an old school. I, I always talk. I'm always talking about some of here. So keep watching. Just keep watching. But what I will tell you is live your best life. Show up and do your best. Do your best for you in your life. Be kind to people. Be kind to yourself. And I leave this video with everything all the time. Know that you're never alone. That you are truly, truly loved. <laughs> I love you. But God loves you the most. Always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. Y'all know I love you. I thank y'all for the questions and answers. If I didn't answer somebody's questions or missed somebody's questions, just drop it in the comments. And let me know. But I thank y'all for joining me for Sunday breakfast for a change. Anyway, y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Make it count. Have joy in your heart. Love you much. Bye.